if I am, if I am asked to, to choose a, a parish of my choice, I would choose St. John's over and over and over again. I, I have been in this parish for 17 months. Well, I want to make it look big, you know. <laughs> I've been in this parish for a year and five months, and I, I recall how, you know, Father Jerry really helped me to transition into the pastoral life of this parish. Thanks to Father Jerry, and thanks for being here, and thanks to Father Ferdinand, who laid the foundation, you know, for me to come to this parish he did so well. <laughs> you know, he did so well that when I came to this place, I actually enjoyed his accolades. <laughs> Thank you for the third nerd. Thank you for the Ladio, for the Mel, the King Jose, the King Paul. You're all wonderful ministers of God. This parish, this parish has helped me to be a better priest and a better shepherd. I am forever grateful to you all. You are such a loving and caring and welcoming parish that I didn't experience any friction when I came to this place. From the first day I arrived here till now, it has been love, encouragement, prayers. It has been affirmation, validation. And I just see myself growing in this place. So you bring out the best in me. And that is why I'm going to miss you all. <laughs> I, I love you all from the bottom of my heart. You occupy a special place in my heart. And I remain forever grateful to this wonderful community. You know, today I, I feel that God is talking to me personally, you know, tr through the readings of today. I feel that he's talking to me. I feel that, you know, he's inviting me to be, to be, to be a good shepherd, to be a better shepherd. And I know that this invitation to be a good shepherd it's not meant for the priest alone or for the deacons alone. This invitation to be a good shepherd is for every one of us. Everybody is invited by God to be, to be a good shepherd. And as long as you occupy a leadership position, then you have the vocation to be, to be a good shepherd, to lead in the ways of love and peace and justice to be a leader after the mind of God. And that is our vocation. And the beauty, and, 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 and when we reflect on that, we come to see that we, we, need, we need good shepherds in our families. We need good shepherds in, in our businesses, in our jobs. We need good shepherds in our politics, in our nation. We need, we need good shepherds in, in the church. And that is so profound. And you know what? I, I cannot say that I am a good shepherd. You, know, you are the ones to really identify who your shepherds are. It belongs to the people to identify who the good shepherd is or who the bad shepherd is. The people will have to say that. The voice of the people is the voice of God. Vox populi, vox dei. It also belongs to God ultimately to identify who the good shepherds are because God is our ultimate shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. And it is God who appoints shepherds. It is God who chooses shepherds. No one calls himself or herself. It is God who calls us you know, to this vocation. And because it is God who appoints shepherds, God can also replace shepherds. So, <laughs> and, that's, and that's what happens. So, so God calls and God replaces. I guess that's what's happening now. <laughs> so 
So we are invited on this day you know, to, to cast our gaze on Jesus, who is our good shepherd. The Lord is our shepherd, and there is nothing we shall want. That, that is so profound. You know, besides restful waters, he leads us. You know, what could be the restful waters? The waters of baptism. They're the restful waters. And there he leads us and he refreshes our souls. And I appreciate, my dear friends, what is happening in this country today. We have the National Eucharistic Congress in Indiana. And we could see revival in the church, transformation, renewal. God is refreshing us. God is renewing us. And he says today in the gospel, come to a deserted place come let us spend a while together and that is what i see happening today in the eucharistic in the congress that the church is spending some time with god in silence in meditation in adoration of the blessed sacrament come to me all you who are over labored and overwhelmed and i will give you rest and that is exactly where we are today as a church because we've been through a lot as a church We've been through crises and scandals and problems and now I feel that it is time for the church to pause for a while and rest in the loving presence of God before the blessed sacrament where he refreshes our souls because we cannot make any meaningful progress in our spiritual lives if we do not find rest in God. It is not all work and work and work. We need to find some rest in the presence of God to re be ref that we may be refreshed and be renewed because we have a lot of work to do. Now besides restful waters, he leads us. And what does he do again? He spreads the table before us. What is the table? It is the table of the Eucharist where he provides for us his body and blood. The table of the Eucharist is the symbol of his divine providence that God provides for us our spiritual needs, our material needs. And that we also see that. The table represents that. And we'll come to see in this beautiful psalm, Psalm 23, Three, that he will anoint our heads with oil, the oil of chrism, the oil of catechumen, the oil of the sick, because he is our healer. And then when we walk through the dark valley of death, we shall fear no evil, because death represents the darkest valley in our lives. It represents our fears, our anxieties. It represents our frustrations, the sense of loss, the sense of grief. But he says that when we go through even the darkest valley, that he will be there with us because of the hope of the resurrection, because of the hope of consolation. That is why he is our good shepherd. And I really love the revelation of his name in Jeremiah today. He reveals himself as justice, the Lord our justice and that is so striking because as good shepherds we have to be just justice is the foundation of love justice is the foundation of peace justice is the, is the foundation of of progress so we are called upon as good shepherds to be just and what does it mean it means to do the right thing to do the right thing, to preach the right gospel, to preach the truth. And in the gospel of today, Jesus Christ saw the crowd. He had pity for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And what did he do? He began to teach them. So when we teach the right gospel, when we preach the truth, we are also feeding the people. Teaching, preaching, these are ways of feeding the people spiritually to satisfy the hungry soul, to preach the truth to them. And that is what the Good Shepherd does. That is the justice of the Good Shepherd. Do the right thing and preach the right gospel. Do not abuse power. Do not abuse privilege. Do not manipulate or deceive. Rather, do the right thing. Be just and be justice to lay down your life for the sheep. My dear friends in Christ, we are all longing for the good shepherd. Everybody longs for the good shepherd. We are looking up you know, to the good shepherd because we want a good shepherd who will listen to us and not 
the good, another shepherd that condemns us. You know that? We are, we, we are longing for shepherds that will listen and not shepherds that will judge or condemn us. We are longing for shepherds that will be with us and for us and not shepherds that will always be above us. We do not want bosses in the church, but we want shepherds, servant leaders, Shepherd leaders in the church who will reflect the very merciful and compassionate face of Christ. And that is so important because we all need the shepherd who will be with us in all things, in our good times, in our bad times, in our high and low moments, in sickness, in health, in poverty, in plenty. They are present with us because they now smell like the sheep. In the words of Pope Francis, we need shepherds who will smell like the sheep. And what does it mean? It means that your joy becomes my joy, your pain becomes my pain, your sorrow becomes my sorrow. It doesn't mean that I am going to take the pain away or take the sorrow away, but it means that I sit with you in your painful moment, moment of loss and grief, moment of frustration, that I sit with you and I walk with you through such vulnerable moments because there is a hope of resurrection, that is a hope of healing, that is a hope of consolation and that is what the good shepherd does in the gospel of today Jesus Christ looked at the crowd and he had pity for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd a shepherd feeds a shepherd listens a shepherd provides a shepherd leads a shepherd protects so to be like a sheep without a shepherd is to be in need of protection. Protection from evil. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from every evil. To be like a sheep without a shepherd is to be in need of belonging. It is to be in need of direction. It is to feel lonely, rejected, abandoned. It is to be hungry. Now we have this good shepherd who satisfies our every need. So when we we, when we reflect on the beauty of the Good Shepherd, on the functions of the Good Shepherd, to lead, to direct, to protect, to provide, we come to see that we cannot overemphasize the need for shepherds. So we need friends who are shepherds. We need spouses who are shepherds. We need colleagues, companions who are shepherds. We need parishioners who are good shepherds. We just cannot overemphasize on the need for us to have good shepherds and that is why on this day my dear friends we look at Jesus Christ who is our ultimate good shepherd we see that his blood unites us I love what St. Paul says today in the second reading that you know he has broken down every wall of division every wall of hostility that is no Jew no Greek no Gentile we are all one in Christ Jesus why because of the blood of the good shepherd shepherd he spilled his blood his blood unites and reconciles us to their father but your friends in Christ that is the beauty of our Catholic faith that we are all gathered here around the table where we celebrate his precious blood and we eat his body the table represents the symbol of our unity we're all coming from different parts of the world, but we are all united. Why? Because we have the table that unites each and every one of us. It is one bread, it is one body, it is one Lord of all, one faith, one hope, one baptism. And though many throughout all the earth, we are one body in this one Lord. May we pray for shepherds who will unite us and not divide us.